Good morning. I'm a teaching artist and my name is Jean Howard and I absolutely love Vincent Van Gogh and I know you're going to love him too because you're going to learn all about him today and you're going to learn how to draw sunflowers. He did 12 of these so we're not going to be doing 12 today we're just going to be doing one and we start with shapes. I want you to be brave Take a big deep breath and realize there are only 10 circles here and a U. So we're starting with a U. Take out a nice piece of paper, make sure it's vertical, and get a Sharpie. We don't use pencils because we're just going to enjoy the flow of our creativity. Now Vincent Van Gogh had a lot of courage and he would want you to have courage too. And don't worry, you're not going to be making a mistake. The first thing we're going to be doing is drawing a U. So very carefully, at the bottom of your page, draw a U, a U shape, which will be the vase. I have a large copy here that gives you an idea of what we're going to be doing. Then we're going to be doing lots of circles, lots of circles. So you'll be drawing a center circle, and you know what? I'm kind of going to make some dotted lines around my circles because these are sunflowers and they're kind of on the, the other end. They're starting to fade, but they're so beautiful because there are so many different colors in the sunflower. So right now I've got one, two, three, four, five circles. Let's add five more. Six circles. And the sunflower fills up the top of your drawing. The top of your page should be filled with circles. Now we know that sunflowers don't just pop out without a stem. So let's go ahead and add some stems. Let's add some stems to our sunflowers. And we realized that when we're doing this, Vincent van Gogh loved sunflowers. He loved being in the south of France and as a matter of fact, pretty soon I'm going to show you exactly what he was like because I'm going to get dressed up as Vincent van Gogh and I am going to share with you some of his stories. As soon as you do your circles, let's go ahead and draw small dotted circles in the center of each of our circles so that it fills up the whole page. And you have to know that Vincent van Gogh wrote many, many letters and he had many famous quotes. One of his quotes was, have courage, the beginning is always more difficult than anything. After I do my stems and after I do my center little dotted line circles, take a deep breath, look at your work and pat yourself on the back and say, you know what? I'm doing a really great job. All of nature is beautiful. So remember that when you're drawing and your work will be good too. Now add the petals and they're kind of droopy, kind of little W's around the sides of your circle. Just little W's because these are the petals of the sunflower. And they, they're really pretty and that's the yellow part that we see if we were in a field of sunflowers, but I want you to realize it's not all just bright yellow, is it? There are lots of tones and shades, lots of different shades of yellow because nature is never, never, never one color. Can you believe that he made 12 of these drawings? Now you're going to say, why? Why did somebody make 12? I think he was kind of lonesome 
and he didn't have anything to paint. And if you've ever been to the south of France, there are tons of sunflowers. So he would just grab them up, put them in his little house in the south of France. And I'm almost done here. You don't have to take a lot of time with these petals because they're just about to fall off. And it makes you think about life and how beautiful life is and how fragile, how really fragile. Now I'm almost to the end of putting on my petals and look how quickly we can actually make a great sunflower painting. At the bottom of the vase, you're gonna make a little smiley line. And I always put, Vincent put his name right here, but I always put my name here. Why not? I did it. And then we have our background line, our horizon line, and it goes behind the vase. So, voila! We're done with the first part of our drawing. Now you have choices to make. Let's use watercolors today, you want to? These are some watercolors that I buy at Michael's and they cost $5 and they're very satisfying because look at all the different tones. I say tones. All of our warm tones are the tones the colors that, that Vincent van Gogh loved, that he used, and we're going to use them today. So here's a good brush. Vincent van Gogh used piles and piles of, of, of uh, oil colors, and he would slap them on, really, sometimes with just a palette knife. We're not doing that because we're using watercolors, but we're still gonna use lots of different colors together. So when I look at this original, I see that the center is kind of a dark green. So I'm going to this olive green and just gently dabbing the corner of my inside circles because it's very, very delicate feeling of what this is gonna be. Then I'll add a lighter green to the absolute center. And you, you see that there's so many colors involved in nature. It's never monochromatic. Mono meaning one, chromatic meaning color. So I've got a couple of these done and I wanna show you how we're gonna do the center. Go for the dark orange have a dark orange and we're going to dab that orange around the center of our flower. And we want it because those are where the seeds are actually in. I'm using another rust color too here because Vincent van Gogh loved, 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 loved color and he loved the sunshine and so all of his work is gonna have very many different kinds of colors. So as we do this, you realize that the key to Vincent van Gogh using many, many, especially with the sunflowers, warm, warm colors. We're using our warm, palette and that is going to be how we're going to be doing using our sunflowers and then we're going to add our stems which will be just shades of green always think in terms of tones lots of different tones I'm kind of dabbing this along and showing you that it's one color green and then I'm going to try another color on top. And Vincent van Gogh tells us that the more that we study details, the more we appreciate life. The more we study all the little details that we see, 
the more we appreciate live. So here's just kind of a sample of what your sunflower is going to start to be looking like if you're using watercolors. Now, just to give you another sample, if you're going to be using color pencils, here's a student's work using colored pencils. And you'll notice that everybody's got their own style and he used lots of shades of orange and sepia and yellow and he didn't do the background so I was going to show you how to color in a background easily with colored pencils. I'm going to start I'm going to start with the blue. If you're using colored pencils I want you to be sure to learn how to shade which means you turn your pencil to the side and get a really nice shading quality around your drawing. And actually, Vincent Van Gogh used yellow, but you know what? We're gonna break that mold. And I want you to use your own creativity too. If you want a, a blue background on your, your sunflowers, go for it. But notice I go in one direction. I keep the pencil firm in my hand. I turn it to the side and I'm getting a really nice shaded background. Now that is how you are gonna be shading in your, your sunflowers in case you're doing a pencil. That's what I want you to do. Now the third way that we can work on all this is using acrylics, which would be the closest thing to an oil, oil just like Vincent Van Gogh. And this is fun because there's lots of texture and you notice there's a lot of blending of the colors. And here again, I have a rough sample. This is, this is a rough sample of a student that started her painting. And if you are going to do this at home, you have three different kinds of paint that you can actually use. This is, these are Oops paints that you can get at Home Depot for $2.50 and they're wonderful. Here's a little acrylic that you can get at Walmart and they have all different shades and they're about a dollar each. They're really great. And here are your basic latex acrylic paints that a lot of artists use. So again, when you're doing this kind of painting, you really just need to use your brush like a pencil. And I've got, I've got one, two, three, four, five little circles. Well, I'm gonna add some more. Six, seven, eight, nine and whoa I need something over on the side don't I so I'm putting a little flower I'm going to put a flower there then you go ahead make sure you put it on a table so you need that horizon line make sure you add the little smile on the vase and this is where you will be taking different colors and mixing them so Let's say, <coughs> I've got a little of my acrylic. I'm gonna pour it in here. And again, remember the shapes that we've talked about. You want the center of the flower. You're always kind of thinking of texture and you're thinking about Vincent Van Gogh and how much he enjoyed 
painting his sunflowers. If you don't have a lot of colors, go ahead and use the colors you have. I'm adding the little petals now to this. And every sunflower is going to be a reflection of you. You don't want to compare your work with your brother or sister or your friend. You want to make sure that you're happy with your own creativity because a lot of times people would criticize Van Gogh and he would just say, well, I'm, I'm doing this for me and I, I believe in what I'm doing. And you know what, students believe in what you're doing. So this gives you an idea of mixing and blending with these acrylics. And that can be really fun because you don't really need water. You don't need anything but use your paintbrush like a pencil. And notice how I dab the paint. You never scrape your paintbrush. It's always dabbing and always mixing colors. So this gives you an idea of how this can change into the sunflowers. So now, it's time for you to meet the real Vincent Van Gogh. Let's do it. I'm Vincent Van Gogh. Can you tell? I have on a beard and I have on, I have some sunflowers. And this is kind of my signature. You've probably seen sunflowers a lot of times, but you might not have known that it's from a famous artist and that's me. So let's have a quick introduction. I want you to listen to my story so that you can tell your story. Your story is really special and your creativity is super special. And that's something we're going to work on today. First of all, there are going to be three words we're going to learn when we do our talk today. The first word is impressionism. You're going to say, oh my gosh, what's that? Not to worry, I'll tell you what it is a little bit later. Then we're going to talk a little bit about reflection. Oh no, that's another huge word. What am I gonna do with reflection? Reflection just means thinking about something in a special way. And the third word we're gonna think about is emotion. How do we feel about something? So here we go. You're gonna love my story because it's got lots of interesting details. First of all, I was born in the Netherlands. That means I'm Dutch. And I had two brothers and three sisters. And honestly, my brother Theo, he became my best friend in life and he helped me become the artist that I became. And Theo said, Vincent, go down to Paris. You'll love it. There are lots of famous artists down there. And so I did. I went down to Paris. I met Renoir, Degas, Paul Cezanne, Paul Gauguin, a whole group. And guess what? I had courage and he told me to become an artist. Now listen, I did not become an artist until I was 27 years old. So sometimes it takes a long time to find your path, but just keep with it. So this is where I tell you about Impressionism. This is Claude Monet, one of the most famous Impressionist painters who was born in France in 1840. Monet's father wanted him to go into the family business, but he wanted to be an artist. He drew caricatures of his teachers and of tourists on the beach, and he wasn't bad. This is a painting he made in 1872 called Impression Sunrise. He called it an impression because he was trying to capture an impression of what that sunrise looked like. This painting is the reason why Monet and a few fellow painters became known as Impressionists. An impression can be an idea or feeling about something. These artists tried to capture an impression of everyday life that they saw in front of them. Their style was known for its bright colours and its bold brush strokes. They all lived in Paris in the late 1800s and were rebels. They put on their own exhibitions because official exhibitions at the Salon rejected their work. 
The salon was made up of a jury of art professors who really liked tradition. The Impressionists all painted outdoors. In French, this is called painting en plein air. Bert Morisot was one of the only women to be part of the Impressionist gang. Her paintings were often of women and children at home or in the garden, because women weren't supposed to sit alone in cafes. So, what did people think about Impressionism at the time? Hmm. The jury of the salon thought that art should be neater, and the best proper subjects were myths, battles, and portraits of important people. But the Impressionists wanted to paint everyday life. By the final Impressionist exhibition in 1886, the art was wildly popular and people were queuing up to buy it. Not such evil wallpaper anymore. Today, Impressionism is a well-respected art movement that is recognized as changing the history of art forever. I painted another painting called Starry Night. So, should we do Starry Night right now? And then you can color it in on your own at home. Let's go, let's do it. So I started out and I drew the church steeple first. And so go ahead and draw a triangle one third of the way over on your board. Your board is lying down. Your paper is lying down. Don't be nervous, you can do this. It's a little church. We're starting with a steeple. And the steeple is the tallest part of our little village. Well, down here, we're going to make some little village houses that are very easy. So go ahead and just make some little rectangles, little squares, little triangle top houses. We know our shapes, rectangles, squares, triangles. Put them at the bottom and you will start to have the village and the night part of Starry Night. I think I better add a couple more houses, don't you think? It's looking a little bare. So just keep going. And remember, you're feeling, you're feeling like you're there, right there in this village, in the south of France, enjoying yourself as you draw these houses. So here we go, we've got the bottom part of our painting almost done. So go behind the cathedral tower and make yourself a nice set of mountains. It's just a beautiful wavy line. And then there's another set of mountains. Whoa! And now let's do one more set of lines. So this represents the perspective of going back and looking at our hills. And then you'll say, well, what about the stars? Right, I almost forgot, didn't I? Let's start with the moon. The moon's over here, and he's a great big crescent moon. And I'm gonna make dotted lines around it because that moon is moving. And then there's another star here, so I'm gonna make a circle. And that, that star's moving. Actually, you know what? Venus was in the, in the sky that night, as I remember. And now there's another circle. This is, this is so alive, and this is the best part. This is my most favorite part. I've got the sky in a great big S that comes around, dotted lines. It's alive. The sky has got circles, and don't be nervous if you don't have it perfectly. You can just do an S, dot it, and it shows, we're showing motion here. We're just showing motion. Here's another star, and another star. Oh my gosh, starry night, you're coming alive. 
Well then, at the very end, I added a tall cypress tree, which you can see right here. <laughs> because I really wanted it to reach up into the sky. And the cypress tree has a lot of symbolic meaning. It's kind of a tree that we see when someone passes on, unfortunately. So I think my painting, my painting is really telling us something. It's saying, I'm alive with how beautiful our universe is, how beautiful the sky is, and you can color in your, your night sky. Children, I want you to know, keep doing your own style because there's someone out there that's gonna love what you do. Thanks so much. We'll see you soon. Bye.